Hey there people, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. Today in this video, I wanted to actually talk about why I do not recommend that people consume Himalayan pink salt, which so many people believe that it is a very healthy alternative to table salt, which yes, it is a healthier alternative, but it also comes with a lot of unwanted things that are within it that are going to go within your body when consuming them. And I've talked about this various times in some comments that I have made on various videos before and people have asked me about salt on this YouTube channel. And many times I've said to people I'm anti-pink salt when people ask me what are my thoughts on Himalayan pink salt. So what I'm going to do is actually look at the elemental analysis of the Himalayan pink salt and I'm going to be looking at the analysis from this very well known company called Symphony and then I'm going to be sharing with you a safer more non-toxic healthier sea salt that is unrefined because a lot of people aren't aware a lot of the sea salts on the market are refined which means they've been stripped of all the beneficial nutrients that are contained within them and the alternative that I will be recommending is this Redmond sea salt and what I'm actually going to be doing is comparing the elemental analysis of this pink Himalayan sea salt against Redmond's real sea salt so yeah Let's get down to them. So here's the certificate of analysis of the original Himalayan crystal salt and the elemental analysis for Redmond's real salt. And what you're gonna find is when you research into both of these salts, the Redmond's sea salt has around 90 different plus elements contained within it. And the pink salt has around 84 plus different ones. This is why a lot of people say Himalayan salt is the best because it's got way more than other different salts out there. But it doesn't mean that the extra ones that are contained within it that are not in the Redmond's sea salt makes it better because it contains a lot of elements that you don't want within your salt because it's then going within your body. So for example, if I do a quick search here, mercury, for example, mercury is a very well known toxic heavy metal. And it's not in very high amounts, but to be honest, you want to be trying to have no mercury whatsoever in whatever you're putting into your body and do the best of your ability of what you can do with that. So obviously by avoiding the pink salt that has 0.03 parts per million of mercury is a good thing. And the Redmond sea salt has no mercury within it. If we search up mercury here, it says mercury was tested and none was detected, so it appears to not appear in the list of detected elements above, which is a really, really good thing. And any amount of mercury in the body is not good because it's a very, very toxic, heavy metal. And something that I want to be completely transparent about, because some people may notice this and say that, well, the Redmond sea salt is way worse due to the aluminium content that is contained within it in comparison to the pink Himalayan sea salt. So the pink salt has 0 0.661 parts per million of aluminium contained within it. Yet if you look at the Redmond sea salt, it has way higher amounts, 139 parts per million, which a lot of people are going to freak out about this. But you do not need to be freaked out about this whatsoever. So Redmond sea salt are very aware of this and they talk about this and they do say that aluminium can cause Alzheimer's disease and a whole host of other issues as well. And that yeah, you cannot completely avoid aluminium in today's world, but trying to limit your intake and exposure to it is the best thing that you can do. And if you scroll down here, it says the naturally occurring amount of aluminium in real salt is quite a low amount and they state the percentage here and it is likely bound to silica, making it aluminum silicate as opposed to pure unbound elemental aluminium, which is the element researchers raised questions about. Which if you are aware about what they're talking about now, which I am, when you get a lot of elements from the earth, they do naturally contain aluminium, such as bentonite clay and other different clays that people take out there for a whole host of detoxification and health improving benefits that they have shown to give 
people. And yes, they are bound to silica, the aluminium. So your body cannot actually absorb it. So it will not increase aluminium levels massively within the body. And that said, pure elemental aluminium has a gastrointestinal tract absorption rate of less than 1%. This number is expected to be even lower in aluminium silicate as the body's ability to fully break down silica is up for debate. This means that your body is going to absorb at most less than 1% of a substance that makes up 0.0139%, which is very, very low of real salt, which is about this amount here, which you can see is so, so low. So this is something that you don't need to be concerned about with that salt whatsoever. And the next thing that I want to look at is copper. If you look, their copper has about 0.56 part per million contained within it. When if you look at Redmond's, it's 0.279. It has about half the amount of copper within, which copper toxicity and copper dominance is a huge issue that I used to suffer with a long time. Too many people and most people are getting way too much copper in the body which lowers zinc levels within the body which lowers your testosterone levels and has a whole host of negative effects on your health holistically. So if you don't know about it, it's something to definitely look into. Then you have this one and this one which are all radioactive substances that are contained within pink Himalayan salt are not in Redmond's sea salt whatsoever and quite a lot of the elements contained within the pink salt are radioactive a lot more than the ones that I've just mentioned there's just so many of them that are down here that are just completely non-existent within Redmond sea salt so yes it has 84 plus different trace nutrients within it but a lot of them are radioactive substances that have been shown to be toxic to humans. So you do not want them in the body whatsoever. And as you can see, there's just like loads of them. All the ones with the EM on the end just goes on and on and on and on and on. And most of them are in low amounts, but some of them, such as this one, which I've never even heard of before, is in 1.1 parts per million, which is quite a high amount. If you do your research into that one, it is still toxic to the body and yeah i'm not going to go into any more detail but there is a lot of different things as i mentioned time and time again that the redmond sea salt doesn't have in that the pink salt has that you do not want whatsoever so from the research that i've done and compared the salts the redmond sea salt is definitely one of the best ones that you can get and this is not necessarily an issue for pink himalayan salt but if you do your research, in today's world, microplastics have been found in 90% of table salt. I know it's not saying sea salt, but this is a new study looked at sea, rock, and lake salt sold around the world, and here's what you need to know. And this is on the National Geographic website. And if you want to check out either of the things that I'm showing you on here with this bit of information and the two analyses, done on the different salts. I'll put links down below for them. So it goes on to say microplastics were found in sea salt several years ago, but how extensively plastic bits are spread throughout the most commonly used seasoning remained unclear. But now new research shows microplastics in 90% of the table salts brands sampled worldwide. And of 39 salt brands tested, 36 had microplastics in them according to a new analysis by researchers in South Korea and Greenpeace East Asia. Using prior salt studies, this new effort is the first of its scale to look at the geographical spread of microplastics in table salt and the correlation to where plastic pollution is found in the environment. And it goes on to say, the findings suggest that human ingestion of microplastics via marine products is strongly related to emissions in a given region, said Shuang Q Kim, a marine science professor at Ichinin National University in South Korea. So as you can see, they are talking about table salt. So you definitely want to be avoiding table salt for that reason. And obviously because it's been stripped of all the beneficial nutrients, it's that anti-caking agents added to it, that aluminium base, and it can even have things such as dextrose and other additives added to it that are not good for your health whatsoever, holistically. But the brilliant thing Unlike a lot of salt brands out there, even these so-called healthier salt brands out there, Redmond Sea Salt is a company 
that make sure that they thoroughly test their Redmond sea salt and they have found through the processing that they do with their Redmond sea salt there is no plastic contained whatsoever within them and you can do your research up into that online if you want to learn more so if you're someone that wants to get this salt you can get it delivered anywhere in the world what i would do is put uk us and worldwide suppliers down below so if you're interested in that you can click them and i have no sponsorship from this company whatsoever they're not paying me to make this video whatsoever it's just i've done my own personal research into different salts and i always want the best purest products in the world that are going to go within my body then this is one of them which all of us are consuming salt on a regular basis so it's best to try and get the purest possible and before i end the video i just want to mention yeah pink salt himalayan pink salt is very appealing look at it the color of it is just a great way to market this type of salt because it really draws you in in comparison to like white salt or grey salt. So if you have any questions on anything that I've talked about in this video, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give us a thumbs down, I don't mind. And please share this video with anyone else that you think wants to learn the truth on pink Himalayan salt and why I do not recommend it and why I recommend Redmond Sea Salt instead. And if you want to receive more videos from me on a regular basis, don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you of when new videos are uploaded and I have new ones coming almost every single day. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic and go and get those gains. Peace.